A relaxing oasis of spiritual wisdom, a sanctuary for the soul we call satsang. A term from India that means association with eternal truth or God. Welcome to today's Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. The work which the masters of esoteric knowledge do has been described variously, but it comes down to this, to show those human beings who want it, their own real nature and position in the universe. A quote from Russell Perkins author of the book The Stranger of Galilee, The Sermon on the Mount, and The Universal Spiritual Tradition. Satsang is a term in Satmat that means association or song with the eternal timeless truth or God, or Sat. Satsang means association with eternal truth as well as association with God, and to some extent, is comparable to church or temple, but not in any institutional sense. A saying of Jesus in the New Testament provides a good definition of a satsang meetup. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. The format of satsang can include a spiritual discourse, instruction on putting the path into practice, on meditation, a video or audio of a master giving a talk, readings from the writings of the masters or the poetry of the masters, the reciting or singing of banis, bhajans, or kirtans, hymns of worship, but only hymns that are composed by sants, and silent group meditation. It's considered the greatest of blessings if a living master is the one who conducts the satsang in person or in this age of live streaming, via the web. The effect of satsang is that of divine remembrance. Thus, with such a spiritual boost, encouragement, and support for the spiritual journey, one's own spiritual journey, those who go to satsang are much more likely to stay on the path and put effort into their own daily spiritual practice at home. Thus will the life of the bhakta, the lover, the devotee, the disciple, the initiate, the satsangi, become more and more God-intoxicated by imbibing the spiritual wine, the nectar of divine love. Satsang is intended to be an oasis, a refuge from the agitations of the mind, the voices of the mind, and maya, the labyrinth of the world, and the astral plane too, a refuge from all that occupies minds in this land of illusion, from all the outer distractions of the world that occupies people's attention, distracts people from the sacred path. The following is titled Instructions for Holding Satsang by Sant Kripal Singh. Satsang, as the term implies, is association with sat or truth, Satsang meetings should therefore be exclusively devoted to the discourses on Sat, which in its broader connotation includes talks on God, soul, word, the relation between soul and God on the one hand, and soul and the universe on the other. The God way, or the path of God realization, and the God man or spiritual master, what he is, his need and importance and his teachings. It also includes discourses on allied topics like ethical life, love, faith, compassion, and all that which makes way for the healthy and progressive development of divine life, leading to efflorescence of spirit in cosmic awareness. The purpose of Satsang by Sant Kripal Singh It must always be borne in mind that the actual awakening of the spirit is the work of the master power overhead. The talks and discourses are like refresher courses which may help in the proper understanding of Santmat, 
or the teachings of the masters on the intellectual level, for theory precedes practice. Both the initiates and non-initiates derive immense benefit from such talks. In these congregations, universal truths are brought home to all alike. A spirit of universal brotherhood on the broad basis of human beings as the children of one Supreme Father is inculcated, so as to link all with the silken bonds of love and amity. For the initiates, these talks serve as cementing factors on the path, clarify doubts and misapprehensions, if any, and for the non-initiates, ground is prepared for an inner search which may stimulate the inquisitive mind and help the individuals in their innate craving for a way out. The highway of the masters has been, is, and ever shall remain the same for one and all. It is secular in character, and everyone, whosoever, can tread it. There are no turnpike gates of religion, faith, caste, color, creed, nationality, or avocation. All are welcome to it, even though retaining their distinctive religious organizations, social modes of life, and use of national language, etc. For the spirit or soul in man is above them all, and remains unaffected by outer pursuits. Satsang Apart from Rituals, also by Sant Kirpal Singh. The science of the soul is just like any other science, but more exact, more natural, more lasting, and the oldest of all the sciences. It is the science of realized truth directly connected with the soul in man and should therefore be kept distinct and apart from rites and rituals, forms and ceremonials, the performance or observance of which keeps one tied down to the plane of the senses and as such must be strictly avoided. Our discourses and talks in satsang should be confined only to explaining the science itself in lucid terms without any other embellishment like lighting of candles, burning of incense, offering of flowers, tinkling of bells, exhibiting photographs and the like. Even though these may appear innocent and harmless in themselves, yet the seekers after truth are likely to go astray by such symbolisms and forms and may get entangled and lost. The following is from the Satsang Discourses of Baba Ram Singh. The only wealth that is going to be with us, and which is permanent and will travel with us, is the wealth of Nam. That is the wealth which nobody can steal from us. Nobody can deprive us of that wealth. And that is something that we can build here and take with us. That wealth will help us get out of this ocean of life and death and will take us back to our true home and have us meet with our God Almighty, our Father. So we should make it a point to listen to sot songs every day, even if we have to listen only for 15 or 20 minutes. But with all attention, we should listen to sot songs every day and take out time for our meditations every day. Baba Ram Singh. Only the living present is ours. This is from the teachings of Sant Kripal Singh. As there are landmarks on earth, so there are landmarks in time. The past and future are like sealed books to us. The one is in the limbo of oblivion, while the other is in the womb of uncertainty. It is only the living present that is ours, and we must make the best use of it ere it slips away through the fingers and is lost forever. Human birth is a great privilege and offers us a golden opportunity. 
It is for us to make or mar the same, for it is given to each individual to forge his or her own destiny as best he may. A couple of Gnostic passages on spiritual awakening and the ascension of the soul. This is from the canonical prayer book of the Mandaeans or Mandaeans. If he to whom I speak listens, and he to whom I call is established in the faith and is knit into the communion of life and built into the great fabric of reality, I will take his hand and be his savior and guide to the great place of light and to the everlasting abode. This is also from the canonical prayer book of the Mandaeans or Mandaeans. I wander about searching after my soul, which is worth ages and worlds to me. I went and found my soul. What are all the worlds to me? The following is from the Corpus Hermeticum of Hermes Trismegistus. The greatest human evil is unacquainted with God. This is from the Bentley Leighton translation. And it's kind of a kind of an appeal to the masses. Stop, get sober. Look up with the eyes of the mind, heart, or soul. And if you cannot all do so, at least those of you who can. For the imperfection that comes from unacquaintance is flooding the entire earth, corrupting the soul along with the body that encloses it and preventing it from putting in at the haven of safety. So do not all be swept away by the main current. Rather, you who can must avail yourselves of a counter current. Take to the haven of safety, put in there and look for a leader to show you the way to the doors of gnosis or acquaintance, where there is bright light, pure from darkness, where no one is intoxicated, but all are sober, fixing their eyes on that being who wills to be seen, but mentally, with the eye of the soul. For that being cannot be heard or told of or seen by physical eyes, only by the mind's eye, the eye of the soul. A passage from the Corpus Hermeticum. The greatest human evil is unacquaintance with God. The third or single eye is the seat of the soul that can behold the noetic or spiritual light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, your whole body shall be full of light. The saying of Jesus quoted by Matthew 6.22, probably originally emanating from Sayings Gospel Q. Now some have tried to metaphor that away into meaning I have intellectual knowledge that I now have come to understand. I see the light, something like that. But in the mystic tradition of the Aramaic Christians, it indeed meant seeing actual divine light. And those who saw the divine light with their own single eyes were called single ones, and they became a kind of monk-like group, and they wrote much, and I've enjoyed reading their writings. For their mystical Christianity, the saying of Jesus was not metaphored to death to mean I understand intellectual knowledge about one thing or another, but quite literally. If the eye be single, the body is full of light. They use terms like noetic light or light of the Holy Trinity, something like that, the uncreated light. Clearly for them, it was actual mystic light seen with the eye of the soul. That I may redeem you from death and annihilation, I will give you what you have not seen with the eye, nor heard with the ears, nor grasped with the hand. A passage found in the Manichaean Turfan fragments, 
quoted in the book Gnosis on the Silk Road. Back to the man Dians again from the canonical prayer book. Thou hast showed us that which the eye has not seen, and caused us to hear that which the human ear has not heard. Thou hast freed us from death and united us with life, released us from darkness and united us with light. Thou hast shown us that which the eye has not seen, and caused us to hear that which the human ear has not heard. Kripal Singh, this single or third eye provides an ingress into the spiritual worlds, the kingdom of God, a now lost realm to most of us. Of this inlet or ingress, little is known by the people at large. This is from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. In the center, behind and above the eyes, there is an aperture. On this side of it is the material world in which we are now living. And on the other side is the astral world. This is from the teachings of Kirpal Singh, the complete set of five books combined into one volume. I recently uploaded this to my e-library online. Sant Kirpal Singh. So all true masters say that realizing God is a simple matter. What is there to realizing the Lord? Just uproot the attention from here and plant it there. It is simply a matter of withdrawing and gathering together the scattered attention. The whole thing depends upon your attention, or surat, as it is called, which is the outward expression of your soul. Wherever you keep it engaged or attached, those very thoughts will always be reverberating within you. We have to make the best use of things, of course, but we are not to become attached to them. If we can only attach our soul to something higher within us, we would be all right. But if our attention is diverted through the outgoing faculty so much that it becomes identified with the outer things, what is the result? You cannot withdraw your attention from them. It is a question of the attention or surat, whether you keep it engaged to the outside things or invert and attach it to your overself. Sant Kripal Singh. Some definitions of the word Simran. In Sikhism, Simran refers to the remembrance of God by the repetition of recital, the repetition or recital of his name. It says in the Adi Granth that by carrying out Simran, a person is purified. Meditating, meditating, meditating in remembrance, I have found peace. A verse from the Sikh scriptures or Adi Granth. This is a definition of Simran found in Baba Ram Singh's glossary of Sant Mat terms translated into English. Simran, repetition of names or thoughts. In Sant Mat, the Simran of worldly thoughts is controlled through the Simran of the five charged names repeated by an initiate throughout the day and when sitting for meditation as a means of collecting the thought currents at the third eye center. Simran is also used as a password of sorts to higher planes and protection from negative power influences. Simran, the sweet remembrance of God by Sant Kripal Singh. Every one of us is constantly dwelling upon one thing or another. The close association leaves an imprint upon the human mind 
which in course of time becomes indelible enough and leads to complete identification of the subject with the object. And hence it is said, as you think, so you become. Or where the mind is, there you are also. No matter where the physical self is, this being the case, saints take the line of least resistance. As no one can do without Simran, the saints try to set one type of Simran for another type. They substitute for Simran of the world and worldly relations and objects. A Simran of God's name or the word. As the former leads to distraction of the mind, the latter pulls heavenward, leading to peace of mind and liberation of soul, liberation of the soul. Now we have to see where the repetition of Nam is to be done. The divine ground on which Simran should be done is the center between the two eyebrows called variously as third eye, Tishra Til, Shiva Netra or Shiv Netra. It is the gateway leading to the subtle planes. In the state of wakefulness, it is the seat of the spirit or psyche and it is located above the six chakras or physical ganglions. We have to transcend both the astral and causal planes which are above the physical plane. The yogis step by step cross the six physical centers until they finally and completely traverse the physical plane instead of descending down into the lower ganglions and then going up by mastering them one by one in the upward journey it would be far easier and better if one were to commence the journey right from the seat of the soul in the wakeful state which is at the back of the two eyes the easiest way to withdraw the spirit from the body to its own seat is by means of a mental Simran, as is enjoined by the Master Soul. The following is from Huzur Baba Sawan Singh's collection of volumes known as Philosophy of the Masters. Simran is the first step of the spiritual ladder. Guru Arjan Dev says in the Sukmani, by Simran alone you get to the real Shabbat or sound current which leads you to God. Place of Simran, how can we reach the place where we can contact the sound current? Because the sound current is not the subject of intellect, eyes or ears. What method can we adopt by which we may become so fine as to catch and enjoy the sound? To do this we have to concentrate our attention at the third eye by means of Simran. This is the gate of the astral and causal regions. In the waking state it is the headquarters of the soul and it lies above the, f the six physical centers of the body. Next, we have to go beyond Anda and Brahmananda. In order to concentrate at the center, we have to carry out one-pointedly the Simran of some name or names of the Lord. Other methods are unnecessary. Guru Arjan Dev said, the real mode of doing Simran is mentally keeping the attention at the third eye. What are the names which one should repeat? And what is their connection with God? For Simran, there are two kinds of names, personal or subjective names, attribute, att attributive, attrib attributive rather, or qualitative names. Generally, people repeat the names describing the Lord by one attribute or another. Such repetition is beneficial only up to a point or limit for it fails to open the inner vision and enable one to witness inner phenomena. Saints therefore reveal to us the names of the presiding deities of the regions within. Therefore the names that a master imparts 
are the only ones to be repeated for they alone can lead the way. These names are also energy charged and help the transference of spiritual energy to the disciple with the result that rapid progress follows. Even if there were hundreds of moons and thousands of suns or eyes, if they had no sight, would find utter darkness. Similarly, there may be millions of lights on the spiritual path, but unless our third eye opens, it is all dark. The Guru Granth Sahib says that without a guru, these lights remain hidden and the darkness persists. The master opens our inner eye and we begin to see the spiritual light. Even if there be hundreds of moons, even if there be thousands of suns with all their light, there is darkness without a master. That's a quote from the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures. We see the gross world with gross eyes, but our third eye, or Shiv Netra, is closed. It is only when the third eye opens that we can see the subtle, causal, and other regions of consciousness which are beyond the reach of the mind and intellect. We are deceived by Maya and are blinded. We cannot see beyond the gross world. Deluded by Maya, man does not remember the Lord. He suffers in this death-afflicted land. He is blind and deaf and sees nothing. He is self-centered and consumed by his sins. Another verse from the Sikh scriptures. It is impossible to enter and pass through the subtle regions by oneself. It is necessary to have the guidance of those who have already traveled there. Mulana Rumi says that if you wish to go on a pilgrimage, you should go with one who has already made the journey. The worries and difficulties of the journey will be reduced. It does not matter whether such a guide is a Hindu or a Turk or an Arab. If you wish to go on a pilgrimage, go with one who has already made it, whether he be a Hindu, Turk, or an Arab, a passage from Rumi. By attaining the Lord, the mind is controlled. The fear of death is banished and the light or soul merges in the flame of the Lord. True knowledge and the highest spiritual stage are gained. The third eye is awakened and one is enabled to return to his original home. Besides several other advantages, also accrue to the disciple, it is only through the Immaculate One that one can realize the Supreme Lord or the Nameless Being. The true devotee is one who has realized Nairinjan or the Lord. Those were selections from Philosophy of the Masters, a great project that happened in the middle of the 20th century, writings of Hazur Baba Sawan Singh, and then he got several others together to compose this giant five-volume set. Much of it was written by Sant Kripal Singh. Darshan Singh supplied some quotes. Uh, Jagat Singh and uh, Mr. Puri also worked on that project. It was a great project. Grumat Siddhat. Philosophy of the Masters, a great corpus of writings of Sant Mat, supervised by Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. From the Discourses of Baba Ram Singh. Saints teach the path of the five names, and they teach us how we should liberate our soul from the current burden it has, and rise and go within by the use of these five names. Satmat is called the practice of Surat Shabad. The soul has come down from God Almighty, and coming down plane by plane on the different shabs or sounds, it has come down and is now sitting at the third I center in the physical form. It is on that path of the sound current that the soul has come down from God Almighty, and it has come into this plane, and it is on this same path of the sound current that it has to go back 
to God Almighty. This path has been created by God Almighty. It is not the creation of any God-man, but by God Almighty Himself, and it is as old as this entire existence. From the time that this world has been created and the human being has come into form, this path has been there ever since. This is the principle of God. This is the path of God Almighty. And it is by treading on this path of God Almighty that we will go back to Him. At the eye center, the soul has come down and it is sitting at the eye center. And at the same plane, the mind also resides. And at the same place, the sound current is also resonating. That sound current has come from God Almighty. And that is resonating at the eye center. Because we are outwardly focused, we are unable to hear that sound current. That is why the masters teach us the practice of Simran and the contemplation of the master within. By doing our Simran and by contemplating on the form of the master at the eye center, we are able to gradually focus our thoughts and then we are able to manifest the sound current that sound current which has come from God Almighty is resonating at the eye center. It's very pure. That is very sublime. And if we get to manifest that sound current, even for a second, not only our sins of this life, but of hundreds of earlier lives, all of our sins will get redeemed. Therefore, we should make all our efforts to do our Simran, and the contemplation of the Master as much as possible and try to come within and manifest that sound current. When we do our Simran and the contemplation of the Master, we are gradually purifying our mind. And as the mind becomes purer and as the filth of the karmas starts getting redeemed, the mind becomes purer and is able to go within. So as we do our practices, the mind gradually becomes more pure. And then once when the mind is pure, it is able to stand still or become still. When the mind becomes still, our spiritual journey begins. And we are able to gather the attention of the soul at the eye center. And when that happens, we first see our soul. We witness our own soul. When we go within, the soul is at the eye center. So we first observe our own soul. That soul does not have a body of its own, but is in the form of light and sound. When we see for ourselves and we witness ourselves, we realize ourselves, we then come to know that we are not the body which we are identifying ourselves with, but we are the soul. When that happens, automatically our attention, which is outwardly focused, comes within. We then start yearning for meeting our master within and for manifesting the master within. Therefore, masters say that this practice has to be done every day. We should not look at this as a burden, but do it lovingly every day. Baba Ram Singh. Here speaking, uh, and he says this quite often in his satsang discourses, don't look at Simran and meditation practice as a burden, but approach it in a bhakti sort of way of love and devotion. Repeat the names not as a dry, automatic, rosary kind of thing, but calling out to one's beloved Lord, spirit, a spirit of love and devotion. Meditation and Simran should not be seen as a burden that we have to do to put in our time in a legalistic sort of way but an offering of love a divine romance between soul and over soul between that spark of life within and the supreme being we are the many and we are on our journey back to the one supreme being we are drops from the ocean of love And our quest is return, to to return to the Anurag Sagar, the ocean of love. One of my favorite terms for the supreme being. 
Wrapping up today's edition of this Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio, a mystic poem of Sant Tukaram of Maharashtra. Sant Tukaram is one of my favorite Sant poet mystics. The following quote comes from the book Tukaram, The Ceaseless Song of Devotion. Desire only satsang and simran. Misery and suffering do not come near us. Even our weaknesses are all burnt off. Worldly pleasures bow before us but we do not care to even glance at them. All we want is the company of saints and the Lord's name. We care nothing for salvation. Our only interest is to serve the saints. Our heart is filled with the Lord, says Tuka. So we never lack anything. 